Welcome to Sightseeing Japan, the podcast where we explore the land of infinite travel opportunities. I'm Paul Bresson. And I'm Jason Neeling. And today we're going to go over some travel tips that popped into my head on my last trip. Yeah, if you've got infinite places to travel to, you're going to need some tips on how to do that. Yeah, you know, Paul, I think I just noticed another word that you pronounce in an interesting way. Ooh, which one? Infinite. Infinite. That's so weird. I don't even realize how I'm saying it. Infinite? Yeah, that sounds right. Infinite. (laughs) Infinite. 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 (laughs) Why, why don't we say it that way? I mean, I think most people pronounce it infinite. Okay. I'm just separating the syllables. Infinite. I don't know. Infinite. I, can't, I don't even know. I can't. I'm. That's fine, Paul. I don't you, even know how you to do say you. it. You do you. I know you got all these <laughs> words. I don't know how you pick this stuff up, though. That's, that's what really gets me, is we grew up like just a few miles away from each other, and yet there are all these words that you pronounce in a very different way than I do. You know, I have this thing with the English language, and I don't know what it is. It's the same thing with spelling. Like, I'm not as bad anymore. I used to be really bad at spelling. Mm. And I still have times where I just can't get a word right. It doesn't look right no matter what I do on the paper. And I've always struggled with a little bit. But now we have spell check on computers, and it's not a problem. I guess except in my pronunciation of things. <laughs> You're the only one that ever calls me out on it. Maybe everyone else is just too nice. <laughs> you know, no one's yeah. willing to tell me to my face that I'm say- I've am i been saying a word wrong my whole life. Yeah, I've never had a problem with being too nice. <laughs> I like when people are blunt. I like when people tell you you're doing something wrong. Paul, you're the only person I know that I would call out about that kind of thing. It's just because we've known each other so long. We're so comfortable with yeah. each Yeah, well, other. I appreciate that you do it. Do you? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Okay. I don't always think you're right. It's fine. You I'm, yeah, I mean, I wasn't saying it to make you feel bad or like make you change the way you pronounce it. I just think it's interesting. Well, say, say you do say something and I'm like, oh, you are right. Well, you just saved me perhaps decades of future embarrassment <laughs> Like, I could be 70 and still doing things wrong because no one ever told me I'm doing it wrong. So thank you. Well, you're welcome, I guess. Anyways, we've got a podcast to do about travel tips. Yeah, we should probably get into those, I guess. Okay, so I have 20 because I thought it'd be nice to have a round number. You know, when people list off a list of things, they usually have a nice round number. Top 20 travel tips. There you go. And I haven't heard these yet. So after that beginning, I'm going to judge these mercilessly. I bet they're good. I bet they're good, but... I thought there was nothing... Uh, we'll see. There was no bad blood about the calling no, we, out No, we just... I just came to the conclusion that you have to be brutally honest with everyone about everything, and that's the best way to do things. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna, let's be brutally honest here for this the remainder of this podcast. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We'll see what that means, I guess. <laughs> so so what's tip number one? Tip number one is look out the window on trains, especially Shinkansen. Now, a lot of trains in Japan are underground, obviously, but a lot of them, especially the Shinkansen, spend quite a bit of time above ground as well. And you can see some really cool views, especially on the Shinkansen, because you're traveling between big cities through rural parts of Japan. and you know, if you're a tourist, you're probably spending most of your time in bigger cities or more touristy places. So you don't get a lot of chances to see those little rural communities and they can be really pretty. And, you know, it's just interesting to see how people live life out there. So I'd say, look out the window. You don't need to be buried in, you know, some game on your phone or whatever. Just check out what Japan looks like. Like that's more entertaining for me than anything else I could be doing on the train a lot of the time. That's an awesome travel tip. Thank you. I remember being on the Shinkansen, and it's so cool. It's hard to, like, see the town you're passing through because you're going too fast. Like, your eye can't focus. But, like, watching the mountains pass by and just whipping by the fields of rice and everything else. Yeah, man. Getting to glimpse that view of, like, hundreds of kilometers worth of, like, rural Japan that you're passing through. 
Yeah. You're not flying over it. You're passing through it. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is, it's a really cool experience. Yeah. The mountains in Japan are beautiful. Like I love looking out and just seeing like fog settling down into the valleys and stuff. Yeah. Actually, when you go in to buy tickets, like reserved seats for the Shinkansen, usually they'll try to give you the window seat because that's what people want to do generally is look out yeah. the window but and the windows are pretty big too. It's not like you can't see out the window from an aisle seat, like on yeah. an airplane. Like yeah. you can still see pretty well. Yeah, but it's nice to, you know, yeah, it's nice have to a wider have the field of view. Actually, on my Shinkansen ride to get back to Tokyo on my recent trip, we went right past, well, the Tokaido Shinkansen always goes right past Mount Fuji. And it was a beautiful view of it that day, man. Uh, Unfortunately, the window seats were sold out. So I was on the aisle opposite the side that Mount Fuji was on, but I was like ducking down and looking through the window because you could hear everybody on the train too. Everybody's looking out the window like, oh, wow. Like yeah. you could hear people really excited to see Everyone's going to be looking. Yeah. And it's only two seats usually per side, right? Two or three. Like there's not that many people in the way and the windows are big. Yeah. So that's tip one. Look out the window. All right. Oh, sorry. I had one little addition to that too. Ooh, yeah. What's that? Also on the trains, if you have a chance... Get in at the very front car sometime because you can watch the conductor, which is interesting. And you can also look out the front window and see where you're going. That, oh, that that's cool. pretty cool too. That's cool. I've never seen that. Yeah. I just kind of randomly accidentally got in on the front car on the Yui rail in Okinawa and it's a monorail. So it's like up above the city uh, oh, going along this awesome. track. And yeah. It was, it was pretty That'd be cool. a cool view. I have a video of it. I'll show you. Nice. Okay, tip number two, stock up on 100 yen coins. Those are super useful, especially for a lot of touristy places. You know, you're paying like 200 or 300 yen to get into a temple or whatever. It's nice to just be able to reach into your pocket, pull out a couple hundred yen coins and uh, pay with exact change. Yeah, in Japan, especially on the tourism front, it's a big cash-based thing. So you're going to yeah. be doing a lot of cash for food, cash to get into temples. And if you're talking about anything under 1,000 yen, it's going to be coins. So it's useful to have those on you. Yeah, they can also be useful for vending machines. Yep, and everywhere. you're always going to want to hit a vending machine at some point. Yep. So those are going to eat up your change much faster than you would think, much faster than you would walking around the street in America. Yeah, and they take bills too, of course, but I don't know, just something about those 100 yen coins. It's like the perfect size coin to just... If you just carry a bunch of them around, you'll go through them faster than you might expect. Yeah, no matter how much change I have in Japan, I go through it so fast, I'm immediately breaking another bill. Like, it seems yeah. like. <laughs> Actually, on my trip, the first place I stopped that arcade in Kawasaki, I got maybe like 7,000 yen, like $70 in 100 yen coins. Just because I wanted <laughs> to have a lot of them. I went through them before halfway through my trip. Wow. Yeah, I believe because it. Because you, you spend it. them everywhere. Yeah. Um, and it's gotcha, just awesome to make the perfect change. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha pwn machines, if you come across those, you're going to need a lot of 100 yen coins for those. Yeah, some of them are two, 300 yen for a mm -hmm. spin, so. Yeah, so if you want to collect every single one of them, you're going to need like 30 uh, 100 yen coins. Yeah, the 500 yen coins can be useful too. Paying like yeah. temple fare or paying for street food or yeah. something. Those are really it, cool looking coins. It can too. I save like you those. from having to use four or five 100 yen coins. Yeah. So to get these 100 yen coins, there are a few ways you can do it. I think the fastest, easiest way is to find an arcade. They're everywhere. There's always a money changer machine in the arcades. You can just keep feeding bills into there, get a bunch of 100 yen coins. Nice. Uh, another way you can do it is that vending machines, like I said, they do take up to uh, 1,000 yen bills. So if you stop at every vending machine and put in a 1,000 yen bill and buy something for 150 yen or whatever, it's going to spit out a bunch of 100 yen coins for you. That's a way to get some more. And uh, you might end up with a lot of 1 and 5 and 10 yen coins. Another part of this tip is use those as fast as you can. If you're buying something at a store and your total ends with something besides a five or a zero, reach into your pocket, grab those smaller coins and get rid of those. Because when you come back to your home country, most banks are not going to take coins. You're not going to be able to exchange those for your, your own currency. Yeah, and just having that many coins flying around in your pocket or your purse or whatever, it's nice to be able to 
get rid of the smaller ones when you can. Yep. So that's tip number two. Tip number three. If you have a JR pass, go to the JR office and get reserved seats because the JR pass lets you reserve your seat for free or it'll just let you through the gate and you can get on an unreserved car. But since you have the pass anyway, get that reserved seat because there are going to be probably less people on that car. It's going to be quieter, more comfortable. There's just no reason not to reserve your seat. Sometimes even all the seats can be taken. Yeah. And some people have to stand for parts of the trip. Yeah, you don't want to stand on a Shinkansen because those trips are generally pretty long if you're going between big cities. Another benefit to getting your reserved seat is you don't have to worry about waiting in line to make sure that you get to sit down. So then you can spend that extra time in the train station looking around because there's a lot of interesting stuff you can find in a train station while you're waiting for your train to leave. For example, you can go find an Ekiben. This runs into my next tip, which is get an Ekiben. Whenever you have a long train ride, an Ekiben, so Eki is the station. A ben is short for bento, which is like a lunchbox. So an Ekiben is a little lunch that you can buy at the station and you can bring it on the train and eat it while you're en route to your destination. And a lot of these Ekibens will have local delicacies. You know, they're selling stuff that kind of shows the character of the place that you are departing from. So that's always fun. Just walk around and look for cool things at the little shops at the train station. Yeah, nice to have something to eat on the train. And then eating isn't necessarily the first thing you have to do when you get into town. Either. Yeah, yeah. And also they're selling food a lot of the time on the trains too. There might be a cart that comes by and is selling food, but... Sometimes, but not always. Yeah, and you're probably going to have more options if you get it at the train station. So that's tip number four. Tip number five. Whenever you have spare time and you're just kind of standing around somewhere waiting for something, I'd say it's a good idea to check out some vending machines. Because as I said, vending machines are everywhere. There's a lot of interesting stuff that you've probably never had before in vending machines. I don't know. I just always think it's fun to just find something that I've never had before and get it from a vending machine. Yeah, it's not always the same thing in every vending machine or it's some popular things, but there's always like interesting stuff too. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen two vending machines that are identical. There's always a different mix of stuff. You can almost always find something you've never had before. A lot of times you can probably even find stuff that you, where you have no clue what it actually is. If you don't read Japanese, or even if you do read Japanese, it might not be totally clear. Like, <laughs> what does that actually taste like? I want to yeah. find out. Yeah, every vending machine in Japan is perfectly attuned to the exact area that it's in. So everything is different. Mm -hmm. So that was, what, tip number five? Yeah. Tip number six actually goes along with vending machines. There's some logic, a little bit, to the order of these tips. Okay. This tip is stay hydrated. Always good. You're going to be walking. You might be in the sun a lot. It yes. is so easy to just forget about drinking and eating when you're walking around, <laughs> just looking at all this cool stuff. And all of a sudden you realize, wait, I haven't like drank anything all day. And, you know, you just start to feel like lethargic and you just don't feel good. So make use of all those vending machines and just keep drinking things. It's really easy with all the walking to get dehydrated without realizing it. Yeah. Sometime in the middle of the day, just stop and get a bottle of water at a vending machine. Just drink it. Yeah. You know, you'll, you'll feel better probably. Yep. And then especially if you're going to go out drinking at night at all. Oh, yeah. Like you don't want to come into that dehydrated and then you have to wake up and do a bunch of stuff the next day. Like right. keep hydrated. Yes. Good tip. Especially in Okinawa, you know, tropical I actually saw signs all over this place reminding people, like, drink something because heat <laughs> stroke. I mean, in November in Okinawa, it's warm, but it's not, like, dangerously hot. But yeah. obviously in the summer, in a yeah. tropical place, it can get to the point where it's dangerous. You could die of heat stroke, you know? There's a lot of places in Japan that get pretty hot in the yeah. summer. Like, yeah, that's a good point. It's a hot, sticky place. So if you're there in the summer, definitely be drinking multiple bottles or glasses of water every day. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, this tip came to me traveling in Japan in November. But yeah, during the summer, yeah. no matter where you are in yeah. Japan, it can get super get hot. Get your Picari sweat. Yeah, that stuff is awesome. I feel like that's really good at replenishing your electrolytes. And yes, whatever. it does a good job. Yeah. Okay, next tip what are we on now eight, Seven. Or, eight or something one two does it matter <laughs> doesn't 
Next tip. And this kind of goes with all that walking around. Wear comfortable shoes. This should have been the first tip, probably. This one is so important. I always forget. Like, I've been to Japan four times now, but each time I forget. Like, I know, I know there's going to be a lot of walking, but I forget how sore my feet get. Did your phone track? Your phone tracked your walking, right? Yeah. How many miles were you, like, doing a day? Around 15 miles a day. <sighs> For the, is what you averaged for like 12 days or something. It's a lot of walking. I mean, you could do a trip to Japan and just hang out right around your hotel, but who wants to do that? If you want to see a lot of stuff, you're going to be walking a lot, even with the trains. Like, yeah. you know, you got to walk from the train station to wherever you want to see. So you need super comfortable shoes. You need ones where you're sure that even after walking all day long, you're not going to be getting blisters and, you know, uncomfortable rubbing. And that I'll be honest. I'm pretty sure we mentioned this one in the planning episode. I know we did. But it's definitely, it's a, it's a important enough one to reiterate yes, that uh, you're right. You're definitely. right in that regard. And I have a little add-on that we didn't mention that first time. I found these things at the store from Band-Aid brand, I believe. I mean, I'm sure there are other brands that make them, but they're like these little blister pad sort of things that you can stick on your toe. Like if you start to feel uncomfortable rubbing on some part of your foot, you can put this over there and it like forms to your skin and protects it. And uh, they're great. I'm yeah. going to be bringing them on all my trips now. Head it off before it becomes too big of a problem. Yeah. I mean, once you have a blister, that's going to be uncomfortable for the rest of your trip, probably, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. not going to get better when you keep walking the same amount every day. Right. So take care of your feet. And my next tip kind of goes hand in hand with that, which is schedule time to rest. That's because a good point. It's easy to pack your itinerary full of stuff. You're walking nonstop every single day, and it can just get really exhausting, you know? At some point, you're going to crash, and you're just not going to be able to do the next thing you had planned. Yeah. And you know, on this trip, I had scheduled so much stuff in so many cities and so much travel in between yeah. the cities. I was almost worried that I had too much travel time in there and I was going to wish that I spent more of my time doing things instead of being on trains traveling. But actually, all that time on trains and planes was actually the perfect amount of rest I needed, you know? Yeah. If I'm spending a few hours in the morning getting to a new city, that gives my feet a chance to rest and be ready for the next day of walking. Yeah, it's not like traveling's not tiring in its own way. But it definitely like gets you off your feet, you know, so it saves you a little bit of energy. Mm -hmm. So it's good. It, yeah, it's a good, uh, good break. Yeah. Next tip is leave luggage at your hotel if you arrive early. I wasn't sure how this was going to work because, like I said, I was traveling between so many different cities and staying at all these different hotels. I wasn't sure if I would need to lock up my stuff at a coin locker, but literally every single hotel I stayed at was able to hold on to my luggage before check-in time. Because a lot of times I would show up really early in the morning. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Coin lockers are available, but they're not free. And unless you have weird circumstances, you, you shouldn't really have to use a coin locker. You can probably just leave your luggage at your hotel, even if you arrive earlier than check-in time. Good to know. Yeah. Next tip. Try konbini food. And I know we did a whole episode on kombini. We talked about how good the food is. And kombini are a lot of fun to explore and find new foods that you've never heard of and try a lot of new stuff. But also the second half of this tip is don't forget to also try restaurants. Kombini are so convenient that it can be easy to kind of fall into a routine of like, oh, I'll just get dinner at the kombini because I'm tired and I just want to go back to my hotel. Yeah. But there are so many amazing restaurants in Japan. You don't want to miss out on those too, you know? So I would say check out Kombini, definitely. Spend some time doing that. But also go to restaurants and you might even need to schedule those, like work those into your schedule so you know that you're not going to miss it, you know? You yeah. Can, you can look up specific restaurants in the cities that you're going to and make sure that you have time to go check those out. Yeah, give yourself two hours to get there, get in, eat, get yeah. to your next place. Yeah. yeah some, it'll be worth it. Like the food's so good. Yeah, totally. There are just so many good restaurants. And I find myself falling into the trap of thinking like, I have so much stuff to do. I've been walking so long. Eating just becomes a necessary evil, like something I don't even want to do because there's so much I want to see. 
But think of that meal as its own experience, you know? That's another part of the adventure. Yeah, absolutely. It's another new thing you're experiencing. It's another piece of the culture you're seeing and Mm -hmm. tasting. Yeah, which leads me into the next tip, which is try regional specialties. Every area has its own special food that that area is known for. And if you go to a place and you don't try their regional specialty, you messed up. Yeah, you're walking the walk on this one. We just uh, did your recap episodes for your vacation. Mm -hmm. And like every town you went to, you were like, and I immediately tried the local specialty. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) I had a list of that stuff. Each city I was in, I'm like, okay, each meal, I need to make sure I hit one of these things on the list of local specialties. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Next tip. So you, you may have heard a piece of advice, like every day do something that scares you. That's not my tip though. My tip is do 10 things a day that scare you. Because (laughs) when you're traveling in a foreign country, especially if you don't know any of the language, even little simple things can be kind of challenging and scary, you know? How do you check into a hotel if you don't speak the language? How do you go eat dinner at a nice restaurant if you don't speak the language? Depending on your personality, some people thrive on that kind of challenge, you know? But some people, if you're shy or whatever, it can be really tough to put yourself out there and risk embarrassing yourself when you don't know the language or the culture or whatever, things become difficult. So things can be scary, but it's always worth it. Just do things. Don't worry too much about embarrassing yourself. You're never going to see these people again. So even if things are scary, just do it and you won't regret it, I promise. Yeah. And everyone always gives more credit to the person making an effort. So just go for it and do your best. Yeah. My next tip is a little similar to that. And that is try new things. For me, I love trying new things. One of my favorite things about traveling is just all the things that are brand new to me. New experiences everywhere you turn. And if you're going to a place like Japan, it's on the other side of the world from where we are. A lot of people only go to Japan once in their lifetime, if at all. So you're not going to get another chance, maybe, to do this stuff. So I would say if you see anything that seems new and unusual run straight at that thing and give it a try. Even if you end up not liking it, it's part of your adventure, you know? Maybe you'll get a good story out of it, or at the very least, it'll be memorable. Yeah, a lot of the best memories are like the things that went wrong, you know? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I have a lot of those kinds of stories. My next tip kind of ties into that. Um, A lot of people seem to get stressed pretty easily on vacations. Would you say that's true? Yeah, definitely. Like you see some people traveling and they're just like arguing with each other and stuff. And it's like, yo, you're on vacation. Like I know it can get stressful, but you gotta, you gotta like chill out and enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, the logistics of it, like there's a lot of stuff about travel that can be stressful and there are steps you can take to try to minimize that stuff. But my tip here is just stay positive and remember, try to stay in the mindset of this is an adventure. Adventures don't always go super smoothly. Yeah. But it's an adventure. New things are going to happen. Every interaction that you have is like a learning experience. You might mess up. You probably will mess up. I've messed up plenty of times on trips, but it's always a learning experience and it's part of the adventure. You know, I think it was my first trip. I saw this guy at like the front desk of a hotel I was staying at and he was getting really frustrated. There was like some miscommunication because he, you know, the language barrier between him and the receptionist or whatever, there was some miscommunication and he was getting really upset and I'm just thinking like man just chill like when you're trying to overcome the language barrier it's difficult for both sides you know and it takes some effort and patience and this guy just didn't seem like he had any patience whatsoever he was just like things aren't the way I want them to be and that needs to change you know yeah yeah you know if you start sliding into that kind of attitude things aren't going to be fun for you And, you know, another thing to remember when you're traveling in a foreign country is you're kind of representing your home country, you know? So just uh, stay positive. Is that a good tip? It's a good tip for life. A lot of these are. Okay. Well, I guess this is Jason's 20 travel tips and life coaching advice. (laughs) (laughs) Next tip, be careful planning things on weekends. I mentioned this in the recap when I talked about Miyajima and actually a few places that I went to, a lot of places I went to are really busy anyway, but especially on weekends, be careful what you're planning. 
Because if you're going to a super touristy place, it's going to be packed. There's really no way around it. So if you can, try to schedule things on weekends that might not be so mainstream touristy kind of stuff. Maybe you're interested in exploring some rural town in Japan. That's not going to be packed full of people, you know? Yeah. There, there are things that you can find that, you know, aren't just super touristy, and maybe those are best to save for the weekends. Yeah, and even just some places that'd be busier. If you want to go to, like, a mall, or you want to go see Shibuya, like, it might be busier. It might not be, but yeah. uh, it's not going to be, like, going to the one shrine that's super popular. Like, no, that's going to be way busier on the weekend yeah. than it is on, like, a Tuesday. Yeah. My next tip is about bathrooms. Because as we talked about in our planning episode, I believe, there are bathrooms everywhere in Japan, but a surprisingly large proportion of those don't have soap and don't have a way to dry your hands. Mm. So if you're into cleanliness and you want your hands to be clean after you go to the bathroom, you might want to bring with you a small little hand towel to dry your hands and a little soap if you're into that. Or maybe, you know, one of those alcohol-based... Uh, what, what do they call that stuff? Uh, hand sanitizer. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Always bring some of that with you. That's a good idea. Yeah. You know, Japan is such, I mean, they make such a big deal about cleanliness. It really doesn't make a lot of sense to me why soap is so rare in public bathrooms. Right. If you're at like a nice mall or something, you know, they're going to have soap. Yeah. But it's like the like a bathroom in a park. Or a train station. Or a train station. Yeah. That's the type of thing where it's like, okay, no soap. All right. Yeah. I was surprised actually a few times. I don't remember exactly where it was, but I went into places where I was like, oh, this place will definitely have soap and hand dryers. And nope, just water. Yeah, yeah. Just a sink with water. That's super common. So there's my tip number whatever we're on. Next tip, I made a mistake a couple times on my trip. So I would go to the kombini at night. Like I need something to eat before bed so I can sleep. I'm not too hungry to sleep. And I would stock up on a bunch of kombini sandwiches or whatever. Okay. But I would buy too much to eat and I would put the extras in the fridge in my hotel room. Yeah. That's a mistake. Why? Because kombini food is best right out of the kombini. Yeah. If you put it in the fridge, I think it must be that they keep it at a different temperature in the kombini, but like the bread is going to get all dried out. The rice is going to get all hard. We talked in the Kombini episode about how they deliver to those places up to like five times a day. So yeah. that stuff is stuff it's, is super fresh. Part of that's the time. Yeah. Overnight, they might not be selling those same sandwiches. They might have new sandwiches by the time you're eating the one you saved in your fridge. Yeah. So I say don't keep extra Kombini food in the fridge. Just yeah. buy what you're going to eat. Yeah. It's hard to do sometimes, but. Yeah. Next tip. I think we've mentioned before that there are not a ton of trash cans out in public in Japan right? That is correct. So carry a bag with you to put your trash in. If you buy something out of a vending machine, a lot of vending machines will have a little receptacle next to the vending machine to throw your empty can in because the expectation is that you buy it, you drink it right there, and you throw the can away. But a lot of vending machines don't even have those. And if you're buying a drink and you're going to walk away and drink it en route to somewhere else, you're not going to have a place to get rid of that can. So... I'd say just have a plastic bag you can fill with trash and carry with you until you're at a place you can get rid of it. Yeah, the wrapper of your snack. Yeah. Just have a little plastic bag to put it in, put it in your backpack or whatever. Yep. Yep. It's good just idea. be a Ziploc or whatever. Or just keep, you know, if you got something at a kombini, keep the little plastic bag that they gave you all your stuff in. Yep. Next tip, be prepared for different temperatures, by which I mean uh, dress in layers. You want to be able to take stuff off if you're getting too hot and put stuff on if you're getting too cold. Because even in the colder months of the year, when you're walking around outside in a sweatshirt and a coat over that, once you get down into the train stations, it can get super warm down there underground. You're going to want to take some of that stuff off. I can't even count how many times I've been walking through a train station just dripping with sweat because I came <laughs> in there from outside. It gets seriously warm with all those people packed in down there. All them giving off heat. Yeah. And if you uh, go out in the morning and then you're out till after dark, it's going to be a pretty wide range of temperatures Yeah, between the time you're maybe back at your hotel. So dress in layers so you're prepared for whatever, whatever temps you have. Yep. Next tip kind of goes back to that idea of how uh, vacations can be stressful. You're traveling around a lot. Got a lot of stuff to do, a lot of places to go. Tough to figure out the logistics. 
So my advice is just make sure to take time to take it all in. Remind yourself where you are and remind yourself how much more fun you're having than you would in your normal daily life. I guess this kind of is like life advice too. Just <laughs> stop and smell the roses, that old saying. Yeah, yeah. But I think it especially goes when you're on vacation. Because do you get this, Paul, where you go on vacation and then you come home and you sink back into your daily routine and you just find yourself thinking like, man, I should have appreciated it more when I was on that vacation. You ever get that feeling? A little bit, but I feel like I've gotten better at appreciating the more in the moment so I don't get that feeling later. Yeah, me too. I get more of the, I want to go back. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I guess that was tip number 19. All right. Because I'm, I'm at the bottom of my list. Yeah, it seems like we're getting to about there. Yep. My last tip is people watch. You know, there are human beings all over the planet, and for the most part, their lives are somewhat similar. But it's really interesting to just watch people and notice those little things that make us different. Notice those cultural mannerisms. In Japan, you'll see a lot of people bowing. Bowing is a big thing in Japanese culture and not so much in American culture. So it's just interesting to see kind of how that works. You know, notice when people bow, why they bow, that kind of thing. Or little hand motions that people make when they're talking to each other. You know, every culture has certain gestures that they make when they're talking. It's interesting to notice the ways that those differ in other parts of the world. Yeah, definitely. Body language is... Yes, body language. Body language between countries can be as different as the actual language, the spoken language. Yeah. See if you can spot a couple businessmen meeting for the first time and bowing and presenting their business cards in that certain way they certain respectful way they do it you know it's fun it's fun to see little things like that happen yeah i'm glad you pointed that out like especially in the business world those little rituals that they do are really interesting i remember there was like a group of businessmen walking through the train station and then two of them branched off and one of them was going in a different direction he just like stood there looking at them walking away and like bowing repeatedly in their direction as they walked away. <laughs> wow. It's just so interesting. Yeah. It's so different, you know? <laughs> so that's all my tips. All right. What do, what do you think, Paul? Were those useful tips? Those were, were useful tips. You said you were going to be were, brutally honest. Remember? You were flowing in and out of travel tip and life advice a little okay. bit there. I'll, I'll call you life coach from now on. You don't have to do that. But Please it was, don't do that. It was all good advice. I'm it glad all, you think It was so. all good. Good. Good stuff. So join us on the next episode where we're going to be talking about cosplay cafes and animal cafes in Japan. I've been looking forward to this one because Japan has all sorts of weird cafes that you don't see often in other places in the world. Yeah. pretty cool. You hear someone say maid cafe and you're like, hold up, what? Yeah. Yeah, That's something I need to know more about. Yeah. And we're going to let you know more about it and many other types of cafes. Oh, yes. There's a lot to say. It's going to be a lot of fun. It will. Well, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.